today, GPU prices have reached a new milestone. Intel's new GPU can play Crisis, a reviewer found tons of issues with ARC, and RTX 4000 sees a massive performance boost in this. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, 3dcenter.org recently published a really interesting article that shows both Nvidia and AMD GPUs have finally reached below their real MSRP. So what do I mean by real? Well, instead of taking all of AMD's RX 6000 cards and Nvidia's RTX 3000 cards, averaging them out and getting a percentage, 3D Center took only the GPUs that were given an MSRP before the massive shortage began and looked at the pricing of those. And as you can see, they're finally below MSRP. In fact, they're at 97%, which may not seem that great, but keep in mind that these are the prices the cards should have actually been, not the inflated prices as newer cards were released, with both AMD and Nvidia well aware of the demand for the cards. Interestingly, you can also see the prices correlate fairly well to the mining profitability of Ethereum, though not perfectly, and miners obviously didn't buy more just because profitability went up or down slightly. There's more going to be huge influxes when it rises drastically and goes down drastically. Still, the comparison is pretty wild, and we can see that availability has gotten extremely high as well, so these prices should continue to fall, especially as many of these GPUs will be replaced by next-gen cards before long. Retailers will be forced to offload them so they're not stuck with a bunch of GPUs they can't sell. Next up for today, the first Crisis game launched well over 10 years ago, and while the gameplay itself wasn't that great, it had one thing going for it, the graphics. But first, if you're ready to finally begin your career in tech, there's one place I recommend to get started, and that's this video's sponsor, Brilliant, a really incredible platform that teaches computer science the right way, and it's free to try out when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Now, what I mean by teaching you the right way is that they actually teach you by getting you to do it yourself, and they do it in a really cool way. See, they start off small with tiny concepts and gradually move up in difficulty by adding more, all while you do it yourself with fun and interactive puzzles and they have a ton of really amazing courses whether you want to simply learn the fundamentals or you're ready for the difficult courses like artificial neural networks or even quantum computing brilliant has it all and you can try it for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld plus the first 200 of my viewers who visit the link will get 20 percent off the annual premium so don't wait and visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld today now, at the time, Crisis Leapfrog pretty much every game in terms of fidelity, so much so that it actually still holds up to this day. The problem is that this came at a heavy cost. Simply put, no GPUs at the time could play the game at maximum settings with a decent frame rate. It effectively crippled everything. The game actually became a meme as the ultimate hardware test. Can it run Crisis? I'm sure you've heard that before, but in fact, it took years of new generations of GPUs before it could finally be done. Fast forward to 2022, and YouTuber PCGH Benchmarks and Analysis actually tested Intel's new ARC A380 on the original Crisis. And believe it or not, it did pretty well. Well, at 1080p on very high settings with anti-aliasing set to 4 times MSAA, the A380 achieved 60fps plus, getting around 80fps at times. That's not bad at all given the A380 is just Intel's entry-level GPU. Of course, this is a 15-year-old game at this point, but given it's built on DirectX 10 and Intel has already admitted that ARC will mostly only be optimized for DX12, it's really not bad. Simply put, can the A380 run Crisis? Well, yes. Unfortunately, the good news for Intel's Arc stops there. If you've been following the channel, you know that I've been documenting Intel's GPU ambitions since the company released that first teaser way back in 2018. And let's just say there's definitely been some issues. But today's story might just be the worst. In an official new blog post by the company, VP and General Manager of the Visual Computing Group, Lisa Pierce, answers a few questions regarding their upcoming GPUs. Most of it we already know, but it's question three where things get interesting. Here, she discusses what reviewers are saying about their drivers. In it, she says, quote, We have received frank feedback from press during recent reviews, and we have taken it to heart. For example, we filed 43 issues with our engineering team from a review of the A380 by Gamers Nexus. We had corrected four of those issues by the end of July. Since then, we corrected 21 UI issues, and it goes on from there how they have at least fixed a lot of them. But the part that's making the news is the fact that a reviewer found a whopping 43 
three driver bugs that the company themselves had not. In one way, it's good that Intel is taking bugs from reviewers to heart and addressing them. But the fact that Intel has effectively been working on these for years, delayed them multiple times, only launched them in certain regions first, yet are still having this many issues. And the fact that Intel wasn't already aware of them is just sad. Not only that, but while discrete GPUs are new for Intel, the company has been making integrated GPUs for years. So the idea that this is completely new for them isn't really the case. All in all, I think it's a really bad look for a company that has the budget to do this right. And lastly for today, we have some really interesting news on NVIDIA's RTX 4000 GPUs. The story comes from a new video by Red Gaming Tech and in it, he goes over NVIDIA's next-gen DLSS and ray tracing performance. First, he states that a source has told him that NVIDIA's DLSS 3.0 will actually be helped by their RTX 4000 series ray tracing cores, meaning somehow DLSS will get a boost when using the newer cores on NVIDIA's RTX 40 series. Not only that, but depending on the title, NVIDIA's next-gen should see a huge boost in ray tracing performance. We're talking upwards of three times the performance in Cyberpunk 2077. Apparently, Apparently there's some demo going around internally that shows a boost like this. Another source told him to expect somewhere around 50 to 75 percent more performance on average than last gen. And the reason it can vary so much is of course because it depends on how many rays are used in a given game, the type of shadows, etc. Basically the more stuff that's ray traced, the more of a boost you'll see. What I think will be interesting to see is if next gen can finally reach a point where you effectively don't lose any performance when turning ray tracing on. Basically the ray tracing core would be fast enough to keep up with the rasterization. Whether that'll happen or not is tough to say, but with performance boosts like this, we may finally see it. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for faster ray tracing performance or do you just want faster FPS in general? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day.